In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upload your Selenium tests to the evaluation environment and try out self-healing for yourself. As a reminder, this evaluation environment is assuming that you're writing your Selenium scripts in Eclipse and that you're using the JUnit 4 test framework as well as using the Chrome web driver for playback. Here I'm in my local Eclipse environment and you can see I have a project called Parabank Local Tests. And what I want to do is export this so that I can import it into the evaluation environment. So to do that, I'll right click, go to export, and under general you'll see archive file. And from there you'll want to give it a name and location where to save this export and hit finish. So I've opened up the evaluation environment and you can see we have Eclipse open. You can click this button here to enter a full screen mode if you like and it'll give you some more real estate. And the first thing you're going to want to do is come in and go to My Files, Temporary Files, and upload the archive that you zipped up from your local Selenium project. And we'll get this uploaded to the evaluation environment so we can import it in. Next, from the Eclipse in your evaluation environment, you'll go to File, Import, and you're going to want to select Projects from Folder or Archive under General. And here in Import Source, click the Archive button and find that zip file you just uploaded. And once it finds it, you might notice that there are multiple items here selected. And if that's the case, you'll only want to have the checkbox that says Eclipse Project checked and click Finish. Now that I've uploaded my project to the evaluation environment and I've confirmed that there's no compilation errors, uh, there's one more step I need to take. So what I'd like you to do is go to the test where you have your Chrome driver defined and you'll want to create a Chrome options object and then call the add arguments method on it with the string dash dash no dash sandbox and then pass that Chrome Options object into your Chrome driver constructor. And one thing I'll point out is you only need to do this for this evaluation environment. If you're evaluating Selenic on your local machine, there are no changes you need to make to your code whatsoever. Uh, but since you'd like to play back your Selenium tests here in the evaluation environment, uh, you need to make this minor change to get Chrome to play back properly. All right, now we're ready to go. So to play back, you'll go to where you have your test. You can right click and you'll see an option here, run with Selenic JUnit test. And uh, one thing I'll mention is this is no different than running your test with a JUnit runner, except that we have the Parasoft Selenic agent in the background as well. And here we can see it playing back. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that this evaluation environment is for your Selenium tests that are hitting publicly accessible websites. If you want to evaluate Selenic on uh, internal sites, then you'll want to reach out to us so we can help you get Selenic installed locally and you can evaluate that way. Now that we've played back the Selenium script successfully, uh, the next step is to start working towards evaluating this self-healing feature. So what I'm going to do, and I'd like you to follow along with your test, is um, to find a place where you have some locators defined. And what I'm going to do is intentionally make a breaking change to one of the locators here. And why I'm doing this is to simulate what happens when the UI changes and then the Selenium test, uh, as a result, fails to play back. Obviously, my application hasn't changed from a few moments ago, so uh, in order to simulate that effect, we're just intentionally breaking a locator here, um, and then we're going to see the test fail. So now that I've made this change, let's actually go and do another run and watch that test fail. And so 
what Selenic is going to be doing here is it's um, right in the background as we're playing back. When we come in here, our test is stuck on zip code. And this is where you lose that test run, right? If you have a nightly automation, you, you lost any value from that, uh, from that run. And if we take a look here from our test failure, you'll notice that uh, Selenic has a recommendation for me. So because it's been keeping track of a history of our executions, um, it has a recommendation that says, hey, you were unable to find this element and uh, maybe I can help. So I can either click view recommended locators or update locator and then it'll give me some confidence factors, some recommendations on how to update the locator, and I could update that. Um, but what we really want to do is evaluate the self-healing. So to do that, uh, we won't make any changes to the test, and instead, come back here, right-click on the test, go to Run with Selenic, but instead of JUnit test, select Selenic configurations, and you'll notice we have a run configuration tab, Selenic. And here we have a checkbox for self-healing. Now one thing I'll point out is normally you wouldn't want to enable self-healing from the desktop because as a tester, when you're writing your test, you want to see it fail, right? You want to make sure that um, you didn't make any mistakes before you check it in and it's ready for automation. So the self-healing feature really makes sense when you're doing your automated execution of your tests. But in the evaluation environment, we've uh, enabled this option so you can do it from the desktop and see it in action. So let's, uh, we have this checked, and now let's run our test again and see what happens this time. So just like before, the agent is kicking off our test, and we're coming back, logging in, now we're stuck on zip code again, but this time Selenic applied that recommendation we saw earlier and we we're able to play back successfully. So that's great, right? So this is what happens when Selenic is in the picture and uh, can potentially save your test run from a locator that um, wasn't locating the element it needed to locate. So uh, the next thing I'll point out is notice that we still have a recommendation here. And um, it's saying that this time the test was healed and it told us which locator it used to heal. And we can even come in and um, make the code change because we hadn't done that. And now you can see Selenic even quick fixed my code for me and updated the locator that had the problem. So there you have it. And I think at this point I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, yeah, happy testing.